Welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells here at Hanover Fair 2013. I'm Alexa von Busse, your moderator for the next session. I invite you all to come here to sit down, to have a drink, coffee or water on the house and listen to our next conversation. And I, I'd, I'd like to introduce to you um, a big player in power electronic systems. It's AEG Power Solutions. And I'm eager to know what AEG is working on here. So please welcome Senior Sales Manager Hans Schmidt. Welcome. As I said, this is a public forum. I invite you all to ask questions. Whenever they come up to your mind, just raise your hand and I come around with a microphone. Don't be shy. So, Mr. Schmidt, um, when I hear AEG, actually, I think of the washing machine of my grandmother, of my dishwasher. Yeah. Uh, or, uh, you have one from AEG? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do, <laughs> actually. And um, I remember the slogan, Aus Erfahrung gut, yeah. will be well from experience uh, in English, I guess. So, um, what, are you, what do you have to do with uh, power electronic supplies? Okay, it has also to do a lot of Erfahrung. Okay, with yeah. experience, uh, we are, let's say, we have nothing to do anymore with dishwashers. This story ended probably 20 years ago. But we still maintain this, let's say, this idea of high quality, reliability and things like that. So we still maintain this philosophy in our products. We don't supply anything which is, let's say, supply and forget. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are your business segments uh, concretely uh, which have anything to do with our topic hydrogen and fuel cells? In general, IG power supply is, let's say, active since, uh, I don't know, 50, 60 years in the energy segment. So historically, we have a lot of business with energy providers, with energy supplies, with utilities and this kind of things. And uh, there was a strategic uh, uh, change in the, in the business model of AEG. We, we have the, tradi just, uh, the traditional business, with, which is mainly UPSs, which is DC power supplies and battery-based uh, uh, stuff. And then we changed a lot our strategy to focus on the renewables. And renewables need somehow to be connected to the grid, and that's where the places of uh, IEG power solutions the interface with grid, with uh, all kind of uh, energy sources like solar, like wind, hybrid uh, configurations with diesel generators, with manageable loads and things like that. So that's the dance place of AEG to provide this kind of uh, systems. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's refer to uh, the why of the changes later on. In the discussion, I'd like to point out for the public um, who doesn't know that much about the technology to uh, draw a picture of what you're co precisely doing. So um, I imagine we collect energy from wind or sun and uh, that's going, as we say, we want to talk about power supplies for electrolyzers, that's going to a electrolyzer. Yeah. Um, I imagine a cable coming from the, the windmill or the, the photovoltaic power plant to the electrolyzer. What are the difficulties? This would this? not work. This would not work, okay. But that's what you're working that's on. That's exactly the point. It's okay. Exactly the point. Uh, uh, what are you, the cannot you cannot have a direct connection between the electrolyzer and wind energy or PV energy. You always need to have uh, what we call power conversion. So you need to change from uh, alternating uh, 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 voltage to DC voltage, that's the first step. Mm -hmm. You have to control the voltage and the current according to the needs of the electrolysis process. What, Very what's, what's the need of the electrolysis process actually? Uh, the, the, the need of the electrolysis process, in principle you control the volume of, elect of hydrogen from, uh, let's say, what is the target of the electrolysis process by the, by the current. So mm -hmm. you as much as more hydrogen you want to produce, as more current you need. So you need to have an interface and uh, we are providing that according to the process then. Okay, what does um, an, an electrolyzer need to work uh, most efficiently, let's say that? <laughs> the electrolyzer efficiency itself is not influenced uh, so much by the power supplies. It's more about the 
complete system efficient than oh, we, if you look on a, on a complete system you imagine you have a transformer you have this uh, you have this rectifier in front of the electrolyzer have the electrolyzer itself all together needs to work in the most efficient way and that's what we do we, we do we try to do the conversion stuff in the most efficient way and we try to work with our different customers a little bit also on the system design because you can have a lot of losses and uh, mistakes in, in the interconnection of all these uh, components then. Okay, then let's talk about the, the components. Um, what kind of components do you supply uh, to guarantee this, uh, that, that the electrolyzer doesn't get any difficulties? Um, basically, it's always a combination of transformer and uh, tyristor-based uh, rectifiers. Ty tyristor-based? Uh, tyristor-based, mm -hmm. still tyristor-based, because tyristor still is the most, let's say, effective. We are back to efficiency. Mm -hmm. is the most effective uh, uh, semiconductor you can use. In this case, you have less, uh, let's say, uh, semiconductor uh, uh, parts in the, in the power line. And that, so less you have, so better it is. And then, uh, yeah, that's what we basically provide. And as I said before, um, the, 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 the amount of hydrogen mainly depends on the current you in feed. And that means, on the other hand, you have to handle a fairly wide range of power with this power supply. And this, again, means you need to make sure not to disturb too much the, the grid with that. Because if you work with a normal tyristor rectifier in a wide range of voltage or current, you will have uh, negative effects to the grid or whatever the supply is. And that needs to be avoided. Okay. I think we might explain a little bit more what a thyristor does. Uh, how we, can I kind of imagine like something like a dimmer? No, uh, imagine something like a, like a switch. A switch is just on and off. Yeah, yeah, it's it's on and it goes off as soon as the sinus crosses the zero. Okay, and and uh, I think what you offer there is uh, um, a component called Thyrobox. Yeah. Right. Um, how do you control this? We in, in inside of the Thyrobox we have uh, we have a digital control, so you don't find any potentiometers or things like that. Everything is. It's based on a digital control, and this digital control then uh, at the output you have, uh, let's say, some connectors which finally trigger this, uh, this fantastic uh, tyristors. And to not to have too much trouble with uh, interferences and so on, we go through uh, fiber optic cables and things like that. But that has again to do with reliability then. Okay, you have less problems with uh, electromagnetic fields and things like that. Mm -hmm. I remind the public, just in a quick sentence, that you are allowed and very welcome to ask questions whenever they come up to your mind. I'm not the only one who is allowed to, so just raise your hand and I come around with a microphone when anything comes up to you. Um, Mr. Schmidt, I read about uh, an AG power supply system that will be used for the hydrogen electrolyzer with a total capacity of 6 megawatt yeah. um, in a hybrid power generation plant under construction in the north of Germany. Can you tell us a little bit more about this project and where, <laughs> actually, where do you get a 6 megawatt uh, electrolyzer from? This doesn't exist. There is no 6 megawatt electrolyzer. In fact, it's uh, 3 two point something megawatt electrolyzers in parallel there. And the same for the power supply, it's not a six megawatt uh, system, it's a three times two point something megawatt mm -hmm. system in this case. Okay, what are you building here? Tell us a little bit more about it. <laughs> we, 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 we start from the medium voltage range, so these big systems of course are not connected to the 400 volts, so they are norm normal volt socket, that's impossible. You have a uh, own transformer in front of uh, each of these uh, systems connected to the, in this case it's a 10 kilovolt uh, medium voltage line. And uh, in front of the transformer you have some protections and things like that. And from the transformer you go by cable uh, to, the, to the rectifier. This cable should be as short as possible because you have a very high current in the range of 3000 amps or something like that. And behind, uh, then you go to the rectifier. The rectifier, in this case, is water-cooled. So it's not an, uh, a standard air-cooled rectifier. It's a water-cooled rectifier. Mm -hmm. 
this allows us uh, to, let's say, to build these kind of systems in a very, let's say, with a very good footprint. We can increase the power density a lot by this technology. And it's compact. And right? It's very compact. That's yeah. what I mean with yeah. power density. Yeah. More yeah. power in less cubic meters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Simply spoken. Just try huh? to translate it. Okay. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's it basically. And behind the rectifier, you have copper bars of this size, something like that, where you feed a lot of, uh, I think, what is it, uh, 2,000 something amps per system to the electrolyzer then. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us something about your partners, or is this secret? No, that's. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm sorry, but we cannot publish about anything about that. Oh, that's okay. The final <laughs> customer doesn't allow that, so I can you give you some technical information, but uh, I'm not in the position to open. Uh, let's say. It's a complete construction. Okay, so maybe we'll find out next year. It will be released, I guess. <laughs> they will, it will be started this year, and I'm sure the, the, let's say, the organizer, the sponsor of this project will make a big marketing affair of it, and then everybody will know. Okay. Um, yeah, let's come back to the beginning. Um, why do you invest in all this technology? Yeah, maybe this is the first question. Yeah, as I said in the beginning, uh, I, AG has, uh, AGPS, Power Solutions, has decided to, to work in this renewables area. And we started, uh, let's say, with specific power supplies in the area of uh, raw materials, like polysilicium for, uh, for all the solar panels and things like that. And from the raw materials, we, started, we, we went on with uh, inverters, for, to bring down the energy from the PV plants to the, to the grid. And uh, then it's obvious if you, if you work with, uh, with the volatile uh, uh, energy from, from renewables, uh, somewhere you need to have a storage. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you look on the technical possibilities you have for storages, uh, you have in principle batteries, you have uh, hydrogen, and you have Norway. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a matter of fact. I mean, uh, uh, the, uh, the storage capacity of the mountains and seas in, yeah. in Norway is, is huge. Yeah. And uh, probably you have read it. There is a new cable through the sea. And uh, for sure, this will solve part of the problem, but not all of it. At the end, I, we, we believe uh, in Germany we will have a, a situation where we partially solve this storage problem by hydrogen, if we talk about seasonal storage, meaning more than one week or days and weeks. And uh, the other part uh, will be solved by cables to Norway. Yeah. That's, for me, that's uh, completely clear. Do, do you see a problem in hydrogen storage? Because that was, uh, for example, a topic uh, coming up two years ago. It was discussed a lot. Technically, I don't see any, any main problem. There is the, the problems we have to address, or this industry has to address, and there is a lot of players here, is efficiency, mm -hmm. that's obvious. Efficiency is a key word in this, uh, uh, in this industry. But uh, if you look on the figures published by the different players, this is really improving a lot. And um, from, apart from that, I don't see any major technical problem. The only problem, which is obvious, is cost, of course. But that's the, uh, let's say, chicken and egg problem. Huh? You, there is not enough volume to come down in costs, and uh, the costs are too high to get in volume, and so on and so on. But uh, slowly, slowly, we see a lot of projects, like the one you mentioned, popping up. And uh, this will give a bit of safety to this industry and uh, they will be encouraged to invest. And we, we have an, a number of new players here. So you see it's going on, the people believe in it. Not a lot of them make money today, unfortunately, today, but yeah. uh, obviously there are a lot of believers in this uh, hydrogen story. And we are on also it. one of these believers. <laughs> yeah. That's so um, why should customers here or the scene uh, here pick you as a partner? I think uh, one key thing is, as, as we see, we have a lot of players in this market. One key thing is everybody of these players here has a different system philosophy. Mm -hmm. 
and this means uh, the, the, the partner for the power supply needs to be willing and able to provide a customized solution. That's a key thing. You need to have, you need to be good in efficiency, you need to be good in reliability, you need to be good in, uh, let's say, behavior towards the grid or the energy sources, but also you need to be good in engineering to provide a specific solution, a customized solution to these, uh, let's say, potential partners. That's a key element. And that's the experience that's you what get we from can do. Our, yeah. let's say, box of solutions is big enough so we can deal with all these, let's say, really very different uh, requests from different customers. Okay. Any questions coming up right now? So, Mr. Schmidt, can you give us a short future perspective? What's going on with AG Power Solutions right now? What are the next steps? You're regarding hydrogen or is that more general? Well, no, more general more projects coming up. Projects coming up. There is a lot of projects in the pipe, but uh, decisions in these projects are usually very, <laughs> let's say, are delayed very, very much. Huh? Yeah. So, uh, uh, in general, I see more projects more, more in the moment in the area of batteries, and uh, your organization decided also to take this battery energy storage on board uh, for yeah. next year. Yeah, I think this is uh, really reflected also in our business. We do we offer we offer the both things uh, systems for long-term storage, seasonal storage uh, based on hydrogen, but at the same time also uh, systems for minutes and hours based on batteries. And I had uh, one or two customers on my on my booth during these days asking for a kind of hybrid systems. Why do we not combine batteries and and, uh, 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 and hydrogen. For instance, mm -hmm. you could imagine you use a battery for uh, primary uh, regulation power and you use the hydrogen for secondary regulation power. You use the hydrogen facility to, be as, to act as a negative uh, regulation power in the primary sector. You can, you can play around with a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, 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 scenarios then. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that, uh, I think that belongs together, that makes sense. Okay, so there are many things to do. So, yeah, thank you, Mr. Schmidt. I think we're, oh, we're running out of time, actually. Um, yeah, for further questions, maybe uh, Why Norway is a, a big storage <laughs> <laughs> partner. Um, you can follow Mr. Schmidt to his booth. It's number D64. It's uh, around, no, can you point Just, at uh, it? It's, it's uh, over there, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you okay. very much, thank Mr. Schmidt. Thank you very much.